Okay, so this is take number two on this video. I took down the original video because I put it out there and I asked for some feedback and uh, I was not disappointed with the, uh, the feedback. There was a lot of good feedback and I was given some information about the Baofeng and I had to pause for thought. It's normally a given that people quite often don't have a lot of money and they would like to take the simple, easy way to owning a radio. And the Baofeng may be okay, it may not be okay. Now, as a, an amateur operator, you don't operate type approved equipment. So an FCC tick or an ACMA uh, appraisal is not necessary. You can own transmitting gear that operates outside the amateur frequencies if you want to, as long as you don't operate outside those frequencies. Uh, that is if you're the holder of an amateur ticket. But with that freedom comes responsibility. So I'm going to have to stop being a clown for just a second. I want this channel to be fun. I want this channel to uh, be about um, discovering stuff. And I also need to make it clear that uh, I am an amateur, uh, which means I love the thing that I'm doing, but I'm not an expert. Now I am in the process of getting myself an engineering degree, very early days in that, in that area. Uh, it's not in communications also. I do have a broadcast operator certificate and a few other certificates that I got back in the 80s. It's a long time ago. Got on one of the forums, the Facebook forums, and one of the admin people there was very quick to point out that uh, a lot of the Baofangs don't meet FCC requirements. There is a model that might actually have the tick, but be that as it may, uh, they are renowned for um, being very patchy when it comes to the suppression of spurious emissions. And as an amateur in Australia, um, and in most parts of the world, you're beholden largely to ITU regulations that demand certain uh, spurious emission attenuation. And uh, it's all very, very technical. And obviously, if you are going to operate a radio that isn't uh, FCC approved, you can pretty much be uh, assured that if it's got the FCC tick, that you're probably going to own a radio that is not going to be putting out spurious emissions. But if you decide to own something that is questionable, it's then on you to understand that you're responsible for what it does. Now, um, there's Baofangs that uh, are acceptable, I won't say brilliant, but are acceptable within um, the specifications that are required. I've gone online and uh, in a moment we'll jump on the computer and we'll have a look at some of the information that you do need to know uh, in Australia. But largely, they're, they're, most countries are aligning themselves with the ITU, the, uh, the international body that takes care of radio regulations. And in Australia, you're dealing with the Radio Communications Act, which is looking at the ITU and it comes up with its uh, ideas about spurious emissions and responsibilities for amateurs and all that sort of stuff. So it, I don't want to scare people off. I'm not going to be saying don't own a Baofeng. I will say, though, that uh, you probably need to check it out for its uh, spurious emissions to make sure that it doesn't uh, it doesn't mess with other frequencies that it shouldn't be on and that uh, it's meeting the requirements. I hate to be a killjoy and I'm not passing judgment on people that own a Baofeng, I'm just saying that if you do own a Baofeng radio, it's beholden upon you to make sure that it's within the requirement. <laughs> on Ham Radio New to the Hobby on Facebook, which has over 19,000 uh, members, uh, basically j chimed in on, on the video. I did ask for feedback, and um, he questioned my appraisal of the radio as being a yes. And he basically, um, look, we had a, quite a, a long, um, a lengthy discussion and um, he was pointing out the fact that uh, obviously as ham operators, like I, I've already said, there's a, there's a, a amount of responsibility and uh, if we don't take the responsibility seriously, um, there is that opportunity for stricter regulations which could curtail uh, people wanting to experiment, build kits, um, build their own transmitters, etc, etc. Um, and it's getting to the point now where obviously if you buy a 
a cheap spectrum analyzer, you know, a tiny um, SA online. Um, it's probably not the most reliable piece of test equipment, but I guess it's a matter of doing the best you can to make sure that you're meeting um, your requirements as per spurious emissions. Let's fire this bad boy up. What is this witchcraft? It speaks a foreign language. Well, we've sent it to the intensive English school and we're going to see whether it uh, is able to speak English now. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Nature's gifts. I grew a pumpkin and some tomatoes. Mint. Heaps of chilies. Lemongrass. So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, why is he turning this into a gardening show? Uh, has he lost his mind? I'm actually trying to save money. I'm trying to become self-sufficient because every time we go to the supermarket and buy vegetables, it costs a fortune and the damn things just grow in dirt. And you know, it's really cutting into my radio budget. So I'm trying to save money so that I can get more interesting things arriving in the post. But something fun has arrived in the post and I'm gonna show you it right now. Hey, well, you're getting into this repeater very well. Take 353. Hopefully the neighbor's dog will stop barking. Today, we're looking at the Baofeng UV-10R, and we're going to decide if it is, or it's, let's go. We're at that part of the video where I'm going to ask you for something, and it's something that's not going to cost you a cent. All I want you to do is reach down and tap that subscribe button like it's a Morse key. Send me a nice long QSO and also like and if you could please let me know what you think of this video by chucking a comment down the bottom so what do i think of the baofeng well i've had to change my mind on it um, i've had quite a bit of feedback so thank you um, many people are using the radio um, but andy on on the on the facebook site i mentioned at the beginning of the video uh, made me think hard about uh, responsibility and um, I'm I'm now of the opinion for Baofeng I would say maybe I would say if you buy it you're taking a risk of buying a radio that's going to be producing spurious emissions um, and it, you would have to check it and the onus would be on you so now I am wishing that I bought myself a Yaisu or a Kenwood or an Icom and uh, you know, for an extra hundred bucks, save my money and get something that's uh, more uh, reliable and less likely to produce spurious emissions. So I guess the moral to this story is you get what you pay for a lot of the time. And uh, you've got to be very, the buyer beware essentially. So thank you uh, to everybody that's, uh, that's watched these videos so far. And um, I'm hoping that uh, they're getting something out of them. And uh, maybe I need to spend more time doing more research. But uh, in the end, it's all a learning experience. And um, we just need to make sure that uh, we learn really quickly so that we don't break the law and get ourselves in trouble with uh, our local communications authority. Now, when I get this video up, um if I can get hold of this link, I'll definitely chuck it underneath the video. This is the Radio Communications Act um, of 1997. And uh, this is all stuff that uh, no doubt you guys probably cover when you do your license. Certainly remember doing it a long, long time ago when I did my novice in, when I was 13 years old in the, in the 80s. Um, but uh, if you look down here, if you get down to part two, I think it is. Yes, part 27A, we have a section on spurious emissions. And um, basically what it says there is that for frequencies above 30 megahertz, which is what we're looking for with the Bao Baofeng, it's 43 plus 10 log P, which is the power of the transmission in watts applied to the antenna transmission line, um, or 50 dB, um, the lesser of those two. So that's the parameter that as an amateur station you need to meet. Um, they've also got the the figure there, and if you look at if you go and look at the ITU regulations, 
those equ those equations that are using there are used for a number of the sections of what's expected from a, a transmitting station. So the federal government, through its Radio Communications Act, is looking at um, the ITU when it when it comes up with these uh, with these figures. It was fun while it lasted, and um, I can listen on it. And when I get when I get a chance, um, I will be putting this through its paces and finding out just how dirty my Baofeng is. And if it um, meets the requirements, it will be back in service. Now, if it doesn't, um, what an opportunity to, uh, you know, plug a little band pass or low pass filter in here and see if you can make it acceptable because that's what ham radio is all about. So uh, I have not given up on this radio. You know, I might have to spend another hundred dollars to get it to get it acceptable, or maybe it's okay. I don't know. So that's being put on the back burner. Now, I'm still gonna talk to my friends on the repeater um, with St. George Radio Club. But uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to find the node on Echo Link, and I'm gonna do it via the computer. And that way, I know for a fact that I'm not uh, producing spurious emissions, unless the repeater's misbehaving. So, thank you to all the people that were in this video um, when I was using the radio. I'm not going to put that online because it's it's evidence of perhaps my um, spurious emissions. <laughs> we don't want any evidence of spurious emissions happening. Um, but yeah, thank you to Lou, uh, VK2ZIP, and uh, Baza VK2FP and Roland, um, all those operators that uh, were nice enough to answer my call. And um, hopefully in the future, I will be giving you a video where I appraise the actual emissions from this. And if there's any hams in the local area of Sydney who have access to a spectrum analyzer who would like to reach out to me, throw a comment below in the video and let me know where you are or we can organize to uh, to meet and um, and maybe I can resolve this question earlier. Anyway, 73, thank you for watching parts of this video again and, um, and I will now go and wash all the egg off my face. See you later.